Professor Crush is here to teach you a lesson. I have so much energy in me, you don't stand a chance. Over time, you'll grow to understand my power. <laughs> Let's take a look at all the forms of energy we saw in my intro. Professor Crush sure is full of energy, and the energy stored in his body is chemical energy in the form of ATP. The chemical energy is converted to kinetic energy when he moves around. The light is using electrical energy, and the filament inside is converting electrical energy into light energy. Now, Professor Crush was very calculated when he said, over time you'll grow to understand my power. This is because power is the amount of energy used per unit of time. We did go over the basics of energy in our ecology unit, but I want to quickly review them. Energy is the capacity to do work, like moving an object or heating it. Energy is described by the laws of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics says that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be converted to different forms. The second law describes entropy, which results in energy conversions not being perfectly efficient. There's a few different types of energy, but they're really broken down into two categories. There's potential energy, which is stored energy. This is due to the position of an object, or the energy stored within chemical bonds. Then there is kinetic energy, which is energy due to motion. Other forms of energy, like heat energy, light energy, or electricity, are really all forms of kinetic energy because they're all movement. Heat is just the movement of all particles. Light is the movement of photons, and electricity is the movement of electrons. Let's go back to a second installment of Mr. W broing out in an education setting. When Mr. W, I mean Professor Crush, picks up the log bar, the log bar now has potential energy, or gravitational potential energy, due to its higher position. When Professor Crush drops the log bar, that potential energy has been converted into kinetic energy. There's a few different units for energy. The true SI unit for energy is the joule, but there is also the calorie and the kilocalorie, the British thermal unit, and the kilowatt hour. All of these are just units of energy and can technically be used interchangeably, but it doesn't always make sense. Like, you wouldn't measure the amount of heat produced by a space heater in calories. You would do that in British thermal units. So, just whatever the problem gives you is the unit you're going to use. Power, on the other hand, is how much energy is used over time. And the unit we use for power is the watt, which is equal to one joule per second. Though, because that's a very small number, we generally see kilowatts, which is 1,000 watts. As a note, especially for this unit, those metric prefixes come in handy again. So make sure you know kilo, mega, giga, tera, all of that stuff. Let's see all these units in action. A joule, the most common unit for energy, is force times distance. One joule is equal to one newton times one meter. Newton is really just a unit for force. The log bar that I pick up here weighs about 200 pounds. So if you convert it, it's got a gravitational downward force of about 890 newtons. I pick it up two meters. That's how tall I am locked out. That's 1,780 joules of energy required to do that movement. Whether I pick it up slowly or quickly, it takes 1,780 joules worth of energy. Now, how fast the bar moves, however, changes the amount of power. We use watts to measure power, which is how many joules are used per some unit of time. It took me six seconds to lift the bar, so the power required was 297 watts. And no, unfortunately, I did not place in this competition. I got to train harder for the next one. I do, however, want to go back to the idea of the kilowatt hour. It's a unit of energy, not a unit of power. Because you're taking a unit of power, the watt, and multiplying it by a unit of time, those units cancel out, and you're left with only a unit for energy. This is, in my opinion, a cursed unit that shouldn't exist. 
all of science and engineering would improve if we all just use megajoules as our unit for energy rather than kilowatt hours. But let's show an example of how to do this math with watt hours as a unit. The unit kilowatt hours is made for multiplying a power unit by a time unit, effectively creating a new unit for energy. The unit for power is the kilowatt, and the unit for time is the hour. When you multiply them, they smush together to create the catastrophic amalgam that is the shame of engineering everywhere, the kilowatt hour. Let's see this in action. A microwave draws 600 watts of power. The average American household sees the microwave in use for 15 minutes per day. How many kilowatt hours of electricity does this microwave use in a four week period? Well, let's first see the information they give us. We've got watts, we've got how much time the microwave is used for, and we've got a time period they want us to calculate this problem for. To complete this problem, we'll need to do a few things. We need to get the watts to kilowatts, we'll need to get the minutes to hours, and then we'll need to multiply everything together to get the amount of days in a week, and then the four week period we're asked to calculate this problem for. And if you did everything right, your dimensional analysis should look something like this. In this first conversion factor, I converted watts to kilowatts. In the second, I converted minutes to hours. And then in the third part, I just finished the problem. Seven days in a week and four weeks in our problem. If you did it all correctly, it should have worked out to 4.2 kilowatt hours. Whoops, always circle your final answer. So your teacher is, when they're digging through a page of numbers, they know where to go. And as a reminder, in AP Environmental Science, math problems are worth two points one for the correct setup and one for the correct answer. Both your setup and your answer need to have units everywhere. To help you out, let's go ahead and look at two other example problems that, to be honest, I recorded many years ago and I just don't have the energy to do it again. Get it? I don't have the energy. <laughs> a family has a total of 1,500 watts of light bulbs throughout their house. If they replace them with LED light bulbs, which are significantly more efficient than standard like incandescent light bulbs, they use 90% less energy, the family will now use how many watts of electricity for their light bulbs? Well, we just said that LED bulbs use 90% less energy. So we're only using 10% of the original energy that we used, right? 90%, 100 minus 90 is 10. So here we've got 1,500 watts, and we just need to find 10% of that, right? Because that's 10% of the energy, so they would be using 150 watts of electricity to power all their light bulbs. That is a massive improvement in efficiency. Now let's look at space heaters. Space heaters are very energy inefficient. They actually use a lot of energy to create heat. So a space heater operates at 1,500 watts. If it is used for 10 hours each day for one week, and the cost of electricity is 20 cents per kilowatt hour, it will cost how much to operate the heater for a week. So first we need to figure out how many kilowatt hours of electricity this thing actually utilizes. So we've got something that is 1,500 watts and it is operating for 10 hours. So we are using a total of 1,000, I'm sorry, 15,000 watt hours, which we can just divide by 1,000 to get 15 kilowatt hours. So that's how much power this thing takes up. If energy costs 20 cents per kilowatt hour, 0. 20, uh, I'm just going to put that into a dollar mode, times 15 kilowatt hours, we are using about $3 per day worth of energy. There are seven days in a week times seven. So that space heater costs about $21 per week to operate. Yes, yeah, space heaters are very, very expensive and quite inefficient. I mean, multiply that out by the amount of time um, it's cold here in Chicago. $20 a week is a lot of money to power a space heater. 
I'm going to go back to the gym and train so I stop losing now. Thanks, bye.